Hello and welcome to the unboxing of Political Puppets. It's a, um, a special set that uh, Magic released f uh, for EDH Commander. It's a 100 card single to deck. It's geared towards multiplayer and the reason I bought it is because they specifically put brand new cards in it uh, for uh, multiplayer geared orientated uh, EDH format. So uh, I don't know how I feel about them producing like uh, this is the uh, red white and blue one, this political puppets. I, I don't really know how I feel about uh, them producing uh, special sets that you have to, uh, you know, buy uh, the specific set to get a card that isn't like a normal expansion, because basically, you know, uh, it was actually, purchasing these five decks to get those cards was actually more expensive than I usually just do to buy a box of, you know, of new Phyrexia or 2012, so... It came to great cost, and I was quite discouraged until my girlfriend said, go ahead and purchase the box. Okay, so uh, here's the uh, over three oversized cards that come in each of the commander decks to act as your potential commander. Uh, the idea of commander is that like they all cards need to basically be red, blue, or white. Uh, any mana that would be generated outside of those colors is actually colorless. So we have Zendru the Great Hearted. And some pretty nice foily effects. Light color cards do pick up the foil quite well. And this is the main intended uh, legendary creature to be act as the commander. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw X, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of permanents you own, permanents that you own that your opponents control. Interesting. Target opponent gains control of a target permanent you control. It's interesting that the idea of this guy is to basically give away your own cards. Uh, okay, so let's put them over here. We have uh, Ruan, Ruhan the Formori. He's a giant warrior. I really wish he was a giant warrior minotaur, because, I mean, it would be awesome if I could, like, build a minotaur deck after this guy. At the beginning of your combat, on your turn, choose an opponent random, and Runar Fami, uh, Formori attacks that player the, this combat if able. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for 4, so this guy is just pro-aggro. Okay, and each of the commander decks comes with basically um, a reprinting. Let's see if we got the foil effects on that guy. Okay, there we go. Um, each of the decks comes with like basically a reprinting of one of the uh, dragons, I believe it was from Invasion. I'm not really sure. I probably should look it up since I'm doing like these unboxings. But whenever Numat the Devastator deals combat damage to a player, uh, you may pay three, destroy two target lands. That's pretty nasty. And I really like the R on this one. That one is awesome. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so the cards that are specially produced here are really more geared towards... Um, uh, multiplayer format, and I really do like multiplayer games. Um, each of these boxes comes with the insert that is going to tell you um, a little bit about how to play Magic, and uh, it's also they're going to come with basically a deck list and tell you a little bit about like sort of the theme of the deck and kind of ideas, because not a lot of people are going to want to necessarily give away their creatures and permanents to other people, but um, the idea of the deck is to do that, so the inset will probably tell you a little bit like why you would be encouraged to basically give your cards to your opponents. Uh, get the cellophane off of here. Come on. Oof. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and uh, reposition the camera so that we can drop down right nice and neat on top of this guy. We already saw... Uh, the Z drew the Great Heart. Interesting that he's a Minotaur monk. He kind of looks like a gazelle. I didn't know that Minotaurs were gazelles in other life forms, but it'd be kind of interesting to know like the backstory as far as like what plane this guy you know belongs on. Okay, Goblin Cadets two one. Whenever he blocks or becomes blocked, target player can, gains control of it. Uh, but I guess he's very aggro because usually when it's going to be blocked, uh, it's going to die. So only if they have a wall. Zero something wall or defender, are they really going to gain control of that? Return two target cards from your opponent's graveyard, destroy target uh, attacking creature. Okay, interesting. Uh, one of the cards from, uh, what is it? Uh, the pre printing Ice Age. Um, cumulative upkeep. Put two cards from a single graveyard on the bottom of owner's library. Okay, so this is definitely not geared to towards milling your opponent in EDH, and since EDH decks have 100 cards, really love the wall, uh, the wall focus that they they did on 
uh, the latest set, and Wall of Omens, of course, is one of the best walls that they did, which is, uh, it's a cantrip, enters car battlefield, you draw a card, you gotta love it. I've really wanted a fog bank for the longest time, they are in Urza's, uh, saga, and I didn't really purchase very many from Urza's, so I'm very happy to get a fog bank. Uh, this is a particular, uh, card, I believe, that was only printed in, uh, four, uh, the commander decks. Nin the pain artist deals X damage to target creature and that creature controller's X card. So you could deal it to your own creature to draw a card. So pretty interesting. Uh, this is a different type of deck. I, I don't usually play decks like this. Tap target creature, counter target activated ability. Uh, that's from uh, Ravnica. And I believe this is from Guild Pack. I believe that both of these are from Guild Pack, from the Ravnica block. Uh, you have to sacrifice this guy unless you spend a white, so... But when he enters the battlefield, you may uh, do a sort of a, a ponder ability, apparently. Uh, Ponder-like ability. Defender Flyer. Uh, gotta love the jellyfish. Uh, put a Gazoma in each creature blocking on top of their zoner's libraries. Oh yes, another jellyfish. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to guard Gazoma. So, uh, some pretty interesting. When Fidelkin Plotter enters the battlefield, exchange control of target land you control and target land opponent controls. Interesting. So that's going to get, you know, I can see you giving jellyfish to your opponent. <clears throat> Wall of Denial, it's a zero flying shroud, defender flying shroud. Pretty, pretty potent. It kind of looks like you'd almost want to go into cahoots with whoever you're going to like be basically giving these creatures to. Very defensive. Um, when it enters the battlefield, do tour damage to uh, four target creature. The pretty famous uh, card actually, Flame Tongue Kavu. Uh, a uh, propaganda on a stick. When born muse, creatures cannot attack you unless they pay two for each control, uh, each creature attacking. A false prophet, uh, when it's put into the graveyard, uh, exile all creatures. So it's a uh, it's a guy waiting for Day of Judgment. Uh, it's kind of funny, his name's False Prophet and Day of Judgment. But uh, yeah, this guy is kind of a Wrath of God on a stick. You may sacrifice a creature other than uh, uh, Brian uh, Stout Arm, and it deals damage equal to sacrifice creature, target creature, or player, lifelink. So that's pretty cool. We have Ruin the, the Formori, a beefy guy. We're getting to a little bit more aggro-ish creatures. When it's turned face up, you may exchange control of target uh, creature you control and target uh, creature opponent controls. So that's uh, more uh, trading shenanigans. Is it Cronark? Okay. Domus of Fealty, you gain control of target creature at the beginning of each upkeep. I've seen this guy quite a number of times and not been happy. Uh, this is an interesting card. I don't actually think I got very many when the Eldrazi, Rise of Eldrazi, but whenever it does damage uh, to a player, you put that many uh, Eldrazi spawn tokens, and of course you can sacrifice them to, to uh, pump up your mana. So this is quite... I'm ha happy to get another one of those. Um, Ah, here we have the uh, the the Newmont, the Devastator Dragon, Arbitrator of Knowledge. It's a five five four seven. When it enters the battlefield, each player's life total becomes the highest. Okay, it's kind of an interesting life resetter. Each of the decks comes with a Soul Ring, and Soul Ring is an awesome card. If you haven't played it, I really think that it's uh, you know up there uh, next to the Power Nine. If you've not played with it, I, I suggest you do so. Now that I have uh, five of these uh, Commander decks, I'm going to have five of them. So, in addition to my other two that I bought, so uh, I think people will start realizing the uh, the awesomeness of Soul Ring once again. Uh, this ghost gets a couple lands, uh, some add one mana of any one mana, po oh, Felwar Stone, right, okay, new art that I haven't quite recognized, but yeah, this is a mana of Accelerator, uh, just adds one color that some of your own opponents do, Howling Mine, a political favorite, because uh, everybody doesn't really want to Everybody likes drawing cards. They don't really want to get rid of you. I do like the 2012, the Hexproof Lightning Grease, because sometimes you do want to, you know, Brian Stout Arm, your own guy, fling your own guy. This is a this is a case of mana filtering to get you a color that you need, but it does have the added benefit that it draws you a card, so that is nice. Um, this, I believe, is unique to the Commander set, which kind of displays the new keyword of uh, Troll Shroud, which is Hexproof. And as long as the creature is legendary, it has hexproof. So this guy actually would be a really good addition for um, for uh, the Champions of Kamigawa block. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't. I wonder if that was where they got the game file and for the art. Um, Darksteel Ingot, pay three, uh, 
tap one for any color and it's indestructible so pretty famous uh, Mirrodin standard uh, Dreamstone Hedron I don't know how I feel about this guy I haven't had a lot of chance to uh, to play with with him uh, he costs quite a lot so I, I kind of prefer Gilded Lotus um, it's an enchantment. You sacrifice, you exile target creatures that are attacking you or planeswalking you control. So this is kind of a nice little um, removal right there. A Journey to Nowhere, classic removal. Um, each of the decks uh, comes with some of these auras that are just wonderful. You can give your, you know, just enchant one of your own creatures and give it plus two, plus two first strike and make it nice and beefy. But the idea, of course, is to, uh, since it has this, it can attack you or Planeswalker you control, and creatures you control obviously they can't attack you, but you could potentially, like, you know, sort of use it on an opponent's creature and encourage that creature to attack, you know, another opponent for you. So get kind of like this proxy war going and have, like, you know, puppet state vassal sort of theme esque sort of multiplayer action and of course if somebody's gonna you know use a removal spell to get rid of that opponent's creature that's attacking them you can kind of think of these cards all as sort of like enchantment removal so it's really interesting the way that they work and of course uh, this one gives first strike and some of the other ones uh, give flying and stuff like that creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each thing oh ghostly prison which is basically a functional reprint of the uh, more classic card propaganda Oh, here we go. This one gives Vigilance. It gets plus two, plus two. Uh, here we go. Here's Propaganda right here. You just can't control it. They, the two. This is from Tempest, so this is kind of like the older style card. And I believe there was one from Homelands that was black that is like sort of a black Propaganda. So if you're interested in looking for Propagandas, uh, you should search for Homelands and see if I'm correct. It might have been Alliances. I'm not really sure. This one gets plus two, plus two, and flying. Enchant it to another opponent's creature and have that creature fly over and hit another opponent. And we love the political trickery. Prison terms, sort of like a passism. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may attach prison turn to that creature. So that's how it's different than passivism. passivism. Crescendo of War. At the beginning of each cup of keep, put a strafe, strife counter on Crescendo. Attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero for each strife counter. Blocking creatures you control, specifically you control, get uh, plus one, plus zero. So this is uh, definitely encouraging to pick up the tempo of the game. Uh, this is an interesting other card that was specifically printed for the uh, the uh, commander decks. Uh, whenever a matron's bound or another uh, non-land permanent you control is put into the graveyard, each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a card type with it. So don't attack me or else you're going to have to sacrifice stuff. Another classic brainstorm. We have flutterstorm, counterspell, which is storm. I don't really have a lot of experience playing with storm. Uh, counter uh, lash out uh, removal okay we have punishing fire another removal spell uh, whenever a opponent gains life you may put it back in your hand so that's a little bit of a uh, uh, twist prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn clash with an opponent if you do put uh, that player's uh, creatures do not untap um, during the next uh, tap step so that would be from oh, what is it uh, I forget this uh, draw two cards and sacrifice a permanent uh, that actually has seen quite a bit of play, but I believe that's new art. Um, each player draws two cards. Uh, we're getting friendly with everybody else, uh, picking up the tempo of the game. Clash with opponents and return target creatures on their hand. If you, uh, if you win, you may put that creature on the bottom of Zolder's library. So it's a bounce or removal, depending on whether you win the flash. Uh, owner of target permit shuffles it in his library and then reveals top card of its, his or her library. If it's a permanent card, he or she puts it in front of the battlefield. So another kind of interesting removal spell. Um, the owner of target non-land permit shuffles it into his or her library and then draws two cards. Uh, I've seen decks based around this card, actually, and I don't know, I don't remember what set it's a reprint from. Murmurs from Beyond. Reveal top three cards of your library. Opponent chooses uh, one of them and put the rest into your graveyard. So kind of a little bit of small factor fiction. Return uh, a bounce spell, draw a card. Uh, counter spell, it puts it on the bottom of the card rather than the graveyard. We have Riled Ricochets, uh, change uh, targets of spell or sorcery. And then you can copy. So it's a double thing, but it does cost four. Untap all creatures you control, all creatures target players control, and that player you switch basically so you may be able to use your commander draw a card off of a one faded turn switch <clears throat> counter spell removal okay breath of Daragos. i love this card um it does four damage to flying uh 
each creature with flying <laughs> and each player instead, so it has the potential to do quite a bit. Target opponent draws two cards, and you drop to four cards, and you may repeat this process, and the opponent just draws sides. Death by Dragons is sort of an uh, interesting exclusion spell. Each other player other than the target player gets 5-5 five, five dragons, so if you want to put some hate on one particular player, you can uh, give everybody 5-5 five, five dragons. We have a stir command. I'm at 15 minutes right now, so i got to go through this and tap all creatures, gain control of them. Okay, and we're getting to... Draw, each player draws X cards. So we got mana filtering for Ravnica block, mana filtering for Ravnica block. We got each of these uh, decks comes with uh, the command tower to add a color of needed said commander color. Evolving Wilds, which is basically Terramorphic Expanse, uh, mana filtering, Terramorphic Expanse, and then we get down to the basic land. So thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this reveal of political puppets.